Today is August 20, 2019, and I need to report some news to you. Um, I think a few of you already know it. Uh, the SEC yesterday, uh, to my surprise, I had no indication this was coming um, after I spoke with them last about five or six weeks ago. Uh, they filed suit against basically me, uh, CWH, and NSEI. Their claim is that for the last five years, which is basically the, we just crossed our five-year anniversary, for the five years that we've been fundraising through the nonprofit, that those were actually uh, stock sales in disguise. Um, we don't agree with that position. I've been talking to them about this for some time now. Um, the nonprofit predated, uh, it, it goes back to 2011, so it wasn't constructed so that we could evade the law. It existed before the um, resurrected ASM and the new CWH in Wyoming even existed. Um, but nonetheless, uh, the claim is because uh, even part of the benefits, depending on which program you participated in, consisted of a stock grant. And even though I presented the, uh, the statistics that showed how people weight uh, the different parts of, of the offer, that it's not a direct correlation. And even though the money moved uh, into the nonprofit and then was subsequently used by the nonprofit um, in most cases, and then some of that money has to be transferred back to Crystal World Holdings, there's actually a pretty complex accounting scheme uh, and set of rules that are uh, that deal with that. In fact, that's Alper's business. Um, that's what he does, part of what he does in the tax business. But um, the, the nonprofit, you know, it took the money in, it used it to operate the nonprofit, which is the only entity that's operating. The, the CWH um, entity doesn't have any operations. It's It's got the wholly owned subsidiary GSFE, which is uh, the location for the final regulated market, but it doesn't have any operations of its own. Only the nonprofit does. Anyway, all of that was covered. Um, the origin of this, and Jeff talks about radical honesty, so I can now speak about it because they've made it public. They told me not to talk about it prior to that, but the source of this is the, uh, is the big press hit that we had in late 2017, specifically the CNBC piece. Um, they actually played that piece when I was there in October of last year, October of 2018. They played it line by line. That was the source. That's where they that's where they got the idea they should look into us. What they found, there's nothing wrong with the the ASM platform is not not the issue. If you look at the complaint, there's nothing about that. There's nothing about the no action. There's nothing about the Form 1 that we filed, there's nothing about the, um, the letter that the NRAHL sent last week. Um, it's focused purely on the stock grants that were given as part of programs to people who participated in the programs over the last five years. That's the whole focus of it. So um, I didn't even know that. I didn't even know what the problem was. I just I provided all the information that they asked for. There, I never missed a deadline. In fact, I got the stuff in ahead of time um, most of the time, and I made sure that there was as at least what they requested, if not more. So I didn't know what even the nature of it was until um, about two months ago, and, and that was just a hint that it was mainly focused on the, uh, the company stock grants. And then about six weeks ago, um, they basically wanted me to sign uh, a, what amounted to a blank check uh, in terms of agreeing that we had broken the law. Uh, and I said, well, I, if this is the only choice that I have is to sign this with no specifics, uh, no, no specific penalties, no nothing is called out in there. I can't do that. Uh, and nobody would do that. So uh, that's the last time I talked to them. So that's that's when it was more clear to me just from some of the language in there that it was just the uh, the company's stock grants only that was the issue at issue. So the process was the CNBC piece woke them up. 
they dug all through everything. Um, I, I supplied stuff going back more than 10 years, um, including the first time the SEC asked us questions about things and who we've been talking to along the way. And I went through all of that. So, um, you know, there wasn't any, I mean, there was nothing left out of our story all the way back. So, uh, yeah, so my, my notification that they, there was no additional commentary or anything was the filing of the lawsuit. Now, uh, you know, they did quickly follow that by saying, you know, let's talk on the phone about this. Uh, I don't think they want to go to go to trial with it. Uh, they never do. No, it's not good for anybody. Um, my firm belief is that this is uh, focused mainly on the what we appear to have found a loophole, not by design, but just by the operation of it, which would allow people to use nonprofits to subvert the the laws as a design like that was specifically the reason because our investigation legal research and all showed that this this fact pattern did, does not exist it had not been litigated and there's not case law that matches this so it's my my um estimation along with a few other uh people that have been helping me on this uh that you should respect they're not just people off the street um that that the main issue here is the precedent so I do believe that we can, um, I do, am, I am going to, um, I, I don't intend to engage in unnecessary combat with them. I think that they're just following the process that the agency has. Remember, this is a big machine. And if it doesn't, if you don't do exactly uh, according to what they expect, then it, it'll go a certain, this way. And it's just a machine that has its processes already sort of worked out. Um, and a lot of times they file the trial uh, complaint like this to get you to the table again to talk about settlement. Most cases do settle. Um, I am firm. Make no mistake. If I if I thought that we were uh, breaking the law by issuing those grants as part of a package, I wouldn't have done it. I did get a few people who said it's possible that it could be, but I had other voices that said the exact opposite of that. So. Um, it wasn't black line. It's not a black line issue, but it seems the SEC is very concerned about it um, uh, being a thing and, and being out there. And I can understand that. So um, it does not have, again, this is very important. It doesn't have anything to do with the market itself, the, the sports stock market idea or the sports shares. It is purely based uh, on the grants part um, of the, you know, issuing stock grants in lieu of, uh, or as a, a benefit to um, participating in a program. So my, my narrative, and it's not constructed for this purpose, it's the narrative of this is that the nonprofit was formed in 2011 to, to basically build, rebuild ASM and, and to, and in 2011, we couldn't have envisioned uh, five years later or four years later that we'd have a way. I didn't have that in my head. I n never crossed my mind. The, the nonprofit was to be for education and, and economic development for a later purpose. I never saw it as a mechanism to rebuild ASM or to generate donations or to give share grants or any of that stuff. That just sort of happened as we were moving along and as we started to get attention again. We put the site back together and I just threw it in there as another benefit. So as if, you know, if this mission, because it is a nonprofit mission at its core, uh, works out, then my thought was, well, you'll have a claim against the, uh, just in a list of things, you'll have a claim against the, the ownership uh, entity, the non-operating, and it's still non-operating ownership entity, and it won't be operating until we, um, until we have um, active trading of a customer like NRHL or anybody like that, that's that's when it becomes a for-profit business and that's when the IP is valuable um, for real beyond just what we say it is and you know the holding company and all of that become valuable. So um, that's kind of the 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 soup to nuts of the where things stand. Uh, we did file with them the the Wells notice, which you see. I've now published it publicly. That's the starting point of our argument. I don't know where we're going to take it from here, but that's what we told them when they told us that 
they thought they were, they wanted to move on enforcement. So that was our, we don't believe that it's appropriate to move on enforcement. So that is our basic defense of it. Um, would I have rather this not happen? Yeah, I would rather this not happen. Um, but I, I'm not sure how we could have foreseen it or prevented it. It was, you know, one could say that if um, CNBC didn't happen, and this is probably true, if CNBC didn't happen, none of this would have happened. Um, but also if CNBC didn't happen, a lot of other things wouldn't have happened, uh, including um, bringing new people to the table. And I mean, I don't know that you can, I don't think you can separate it out like that and, and say, well, if we just wouldn't have done that, then it would have been okay. Or if we would have not had any share grants as part of um, the, any program, that would have been okay. And I, maybe it wouldn't have performed well enough that we would have not had any enough funds to get to this point. Because basically my top line narrative is this, is that the New Sports Economy Institute took a million and a half dollars in donations across five years. That's, that's pretty I mean, that's pretty close to right. Um, is, I mean, th thumbnail, there's not missing, large numbers missing anywhere. That's, that's very close. It's about 300,000 a year on average across the whole time. Um, and what was accomplished by that is that we received our first order, our first seven digit uh, order. And, you know, that was the output. That was the productive output of five years of, of the mission of, of build, rebuilding ASM was an order, which incredibly came last week only to have this come, you know, yesterday. Out of, I mean, I did not expect it because I, I expected them to... Um, to go to, you know, since it was a blanket settlement uh, to say, okay, that's no good. And, but, you know, come back with something else, but maybe we have to do that. I mean, look, I'm not an attorney and I'm managing this because in order to keep everything else paid uh, up, uh, the things like people that are working for us, Jason and Zach, and I don't have the resources for it. So I'm managing it the best that I can with what we have and what we're able to get. Uh, so that's kind of, you know, that's all I've got. I've been here before. I've dealt with this before 10 years ago. Um, similar circumstance. Uh, I had to fend for myself basically. Well, not totally myself. Did have some help behind the scenes, which is the case again. Um, but, you know, it was after the crash and this is sort of reminiscent of that uh, same kind of thing. Um, you know, there's a lot of stress coming from everywhere. Uh, radical honesty again, as, as Jeff puts it, you know, I have almost $40,000 in personal credit card debt um, that are uh, direct expenses, attorney fees, uh, even payroll payments to some of our staff. Um, I've done this before. It's, you know, it's, it comes and it goes in our history, but, you know, that's the commitment. I, I don't, I don't separate these things if, if it needs it. That's part of the reason why you see in the complaint the $100,000 they say is attributable to me. Well, it might have flowed through my account, but you can clearly see it went right back out to pay, uh, pay, for, uh, pay for people's expenses and the company expenses. Um, it's just what was necessary at the time. So anyway, um, I, you know, I do that with my credit facilities. I've done it with personal bank accounts when they were needed, to, you know, to keep everything moving. And all that's recorded in the paperwork, which is turned in to, uh, to accountants and everything and filed in our tax returns and all that. So there's no funny business there. It's all as it, as it is. So, you know, we get through five year cycle, um, one and a half million dollars of, of do donation income, and we produce our first order and then we get attacked by our regulator. I mean, it's, it's kind of, I mean, it's, it's bizarre, frankly. Um, but um, what do we do now, right? So where does it stand right now? Where it stands right now is uh, I, I'm not going to be antagonistic um, with the media. You know, I've already received two um, media requests from law journals. It, it'll start there. And then I've replied to those, including our, um, you know, of course, with our, um, our response, well as response, because that's a starting point of our argumentation. So hopefully something good comes out of this, at least in, in terms of maybe our legal arguments, um, because this stuff tends to spread. You know, somebody gets your thing and goes, oh, these guys are in trouble or whatever. They're trying to figure it out and they start looking at it. And because our Wells response kind of tells the whole story of ASM and 
the whole thing and just doesn't focus on the particular parts like, uh, you know, did they sell unregistered stock because they did these grants? Oh, the other thing is the, the registration claims. Um, those claims are based upon the, the uh, WeFunder, based on my memory, uh, they're based on the WeFunder and the start engine um, approaches. When we had to freeze the registry and we had to uh, turn over the share registry to a subcontractor who was going through the due diligence process and there were Edgar accounts being created and all this. Um, if I misspoke about the registration, it was because I misunderstood what was happening. It wasn't because I was trying to say something was going to happen, wasn't going to happen. Those processes failed because of Pro, even to this day, we're not sure totally what the reasons were because they wouldn't tell us at the time. But those two processes failed, and that's why those things didn't happen. And it wasn't trying to trick anybody. Anybody that's been around long enough for the 380-some phone calls and the disclosures and the tax returns and the nonprofit returns, um, there's nothing – I mean, we have nothing hot to hide. I mean, it's <laughs> – it's all out there on the table. Um, that's that's been a mandate. If I would not have done that, I don't think anybody would have trusted us in the very beginning, right after the crash. And I haven't changed any of that. So um, that's so the story they're trying to tell is that ASM is is just me, and there's nobody else involved. That's the alter ego claim, and that um, it's like for my personal benefit when I don't even have any stock. Um, and that's in the Wells response and in the in the in the uh, in the documents and, and in the share registry and um, everything. And it's the truth. Um, I don't have any stock, so it wasn't for my benefit. I'm not the. It's not my alter ego. It's duly formed. We have people that work on this all the time. They're on the phone calls, uh, and that it was all unregistered stock sales, and that I did it deliberately on purpose. Uh, to, I guess, evade the law. Well, the timeline doesn't work on that because New Sports Economy preceded, um, <laughs> preceded the 2014-15 the rebirth of ASM. So that doesn't work. Um, that's not how it happened. It just got added in as a benefit along the way to, to help us get funding. I mean, it did have that impact. I, it, it's not all of it, and it's not the only reason. And we showed that in the survey that went out. But that did happen, um, but it was not, it was granted, all, all the nearly 5,000 documents clearly show it's a zero stock grant. So there's that, um, that, no, of course I didn't think that we were breaking the law. I would never have proceeded in doing that. If, if anybody who's been around here a long time knows the story from Costa Rica that I'm the person that started us on the legality track which was a big fight at the time because everybody else wanted to, half the people basically wanted to leave it off uh, off in Costa Rica and just be a cowboy off, outfit. So why would I put us through all this to try to get it legal and then, and then get into the states and then start breaking the laws? I mean, no, I, that's not the case. The other is that trying to get people to buy based upon telling them it was going to be registered when it wasn't true. Well, it falls apart on a couple points. First of all, there's no stock purchase there, and that's the core of the argument. The, the core of the argument is there is no stock purchase. So when you break that part, then anything else that comes after that doesn't count, at least based on my understanding. The stock registration part was not a deliberate attempt to mislead. It was my those processes, and I'm not blaming anybody for anything. I'm just saying my understanding of those processes which were, be handling, were being handled by other people, was that was what was happening. And that's why we had to freeze everything. And that's why, you know, we had to freeze everything because it was being registered so that we could proceed with the, the, the round through, through uh, Start Engine and, and WeFunder. Okay. So that was, that was why we were freezing the registry and it was to be turned over and it was my understanding that it would be put on file with the SEC. That's, it's really that simple. So that's the whole narrative of their complaint. And then if you read the 40 pages that we were, this was actually from several months ago, that's going to be the starting point. Now, um, again, uh, I just, 
if you need to play this a few times, uh, I'm not reading from a script. I'm just trying to make sure that I cover everything because this is extremely important. There's people are going to have to decide right now if they believe in what we're doing or they don't because it's going to get much harder for for a while. I I I can't reasonably expect um, that. You know, I don't even feel good about trying to get somebody to buy the stock until I clear this up with the SEC. So there's incentive for me, and you know, in the next 60 days, or actually soon as I can, if I can figure out how to to placate them and make them happy enough that that they close the matter and and you know we settle and close the case and there is no trial. However, if it goes to trial, it's a jury. They're asking for a jury trial. I. I, I'm okay with that. Uh, if we have to go to trial, I don't think um, a jury will will see it their way. Um, I just don't think so. So, but I would rather none of that happen. So, if we can close the loophole and not kill ourselves in the process, uh, for them, fine. But if it's going to be, you're going to have to admit to something that didn't happen. I'm sorry. That's I, I can't do that. I won't do that. I'm not going to do that now or in the future. And I've never done it. I'm, and I'm not. Um, I know what I signed. I know what I did. I've been here working on this every single day of my life. Um, I'm not going to have some false narrative put on me or this story. So um, we'll take that where it goes. Um, you know, hopefully it it brings some attention on us. We wouldn't otherwise get. I wish it would have started some other way, but. I have mentioned to Alper in the past that the thought crossed my mind that, you know, relevance may un come from from a fight with the SEC. You know, stranger things have happened. People do fight with their regulators, even though they have deals going. This this is the big world. Um, you know, we <laughs> we like to think that we're somehow excluded from the fights, but we're not. I mean, if you look at DraftKings and FanDuel, and you look at the gambling operators, and on any given day, how many lawsuits they're tangled up in from the state level to the federal level to uh, individuals suing them and this, that, and the other. It's just, it's just as the numbers get bigger and if depending on your ethos, right, what, what, what your ethos is in the company, um, you can draw a lot of those. Um, if I'm going to have a fight and, and, you know, settle the fight, I'd rather have the fight with the biggest dog around and, and it's pretty well, it's pretty well known. That's the SEC. Um, this is not, you know, I just want you guys to understand there's no animosity between us. Um, I talk to these people often. Um, they're just doing their job. I actually don't think they have a choice. I think the rules mandate this, and I think the way we get rid of it is we have to give them something that the court can act on to move the, to, to move the decision. Um, I do think they, for the last time, and then I'm going to move on, I do think the principal issue here is that we've opened up a, um, a loophole um, by accident. I mean, I, it was not by design. If, in order for it to have been by design, you'd have to invert the orders of CWH, Wyoming, and the rebirth of ASM would have to be first, and then NSCI would have to come after that. That's not how it happened. But I understand the issue. Um, it, it, um, it, breaks, it, it, it creates a loophole, and uh, a lot of bad actors can find their way through that. Um, they know also, another argument in our favor, one more, um, just last month, in July, or maybe it was June at the earliest, they put out a comment request for all of the private placement kinds of fundings, Reg CF, which we tried, uh, Reg D, Reg, you know, all, all of the, and the confusion that exists in the market is known to them. Now, they mark in the complaint that it, you know, all throughout the time, it seems like they didn't even know how to, um, to you know, <laughs> register the stock or to do this, well, there's a certain amount of truth to that. And the fact that the, you know, it's not for lack of trying, okay? And it's not for lack of asking people and getting briefs, even from Hero Club people and trying to understand the rules and asking a lot of times on the phone calls, I easily show that I've, it's been discussed a lot. And the SEC now has a uh, comment request out for harmonization of all those rules. So they, that just happened, okay? So they know there's a problem. Of course, I'm going to mention that if there's a case. I mean, you know, you guys know there's a problem because you put out a comment request. So we're not bad faith actors. We're not trying to get away with something. Uh, did we accidentally do something that you don't like and feels against the law? It appears that's the case. Um, but, you know, is our destruction, is that 
what we deserve for it? I don't think so. So um, I'm going to try to work it out. And so where does this stand with everything else? Obviously, Jason is going to have to tell uh, NRHL, and I told him to pass along this video along with it. Um, I certainly can't blame them if they get skittish and run away. Um, we have to get more in our HLs. I mean, that process has probably been made more difficult by this. You know, it, it seems like the headwinds are just growing and growing. And remember what I said, it's dangerous closest near the goal. We really, we're coming down to a choice here, folks. I, I've committed all of my, basically my life to this. You can believe that. You can not believe it. You can make fun of it. I don't care. Alper will tell you that's true. He's he's he, and Neil Brown will tell you that's true. They they stood stu stood through this in the worst of times. Paul Blair will tell you he's seen it too. Um, you know I've given up my my stock um, except for a little bit that went to my kids. Um, I've I've committed all of my resources and I continue to do that and including anything I get that's new, cash, credit, uh, relationships, um, to make it work. I've sacrificed my name. I'm nobody else is in the public domain before now getting any criticism you know they get the good stuff Zach and Ace and everybody else and I get all the criticism and all the negativity and the lawsuits hit me and it's the way it was before um, you know and everybody ran away um, so at this point I guess I'm I'm gonna find out pretty soon uh, whether everybody's gonna run away or not if you run away I look this I I, I can't I can't make it happen it's really that simple. Um, if you want to shoot at me or, or um, you know, this should have happened or that or I quit or whatever and you're not going to help, you're not going to contribute your time, talents, treasure, whatever you can, um, then that's it. We've worked for almost 20 years, uh, got our first order after <laughs> almost 20 years, 15 years from, from the first day we turned it on to, to do the very thing that we uh, set out to do this whole time and then uh, you know the very regulator that we've been begging to pay attention to what we're doing we did everything we knew how to do um, you know the no action request going back more than three years still have an action that uh, form one that story everybody knows um, and then desperately going through the, the recently changed crowdfunding rules when that happened and try to fit into that. And then that didn't work and then go to a different different one, shift the offering around. Now it's not CWH GSFE to raise and that didn't work. And then, you know, what do we do? And, and I've been working with uh, some of our team to make sure that I have the compliance documents on the people that I can get compliance documents on. So, it's not some kind of wholesale thumbing of the law, uh, our nose at the law. It's ridiculous. Um, it just, it's really complicated and we were not able to figure it out. We had the donation system and that was funding us before we had anything. Okay. Anyway, I'm repeating myself. So where do we stand? We're going to keep going. And look, I, I do believe that whatever's going to happen, win, lose, or draw, is, is happening this year, okay? Um, it, it is all, I mean, we, it's a do or die moment. I, I, I don't think I can um, ask anybody to reasonably support us financially or otherwise past the end of the year if we don't, um, if we don't collect an order book, really. That's, that's the bottom line. If we collect the order book, all the problems go away. I actually, incidentally, just coming back to my desk here, was listening to a lecture. Um, it's funny how you get information right at the moment you need it, and it was exactly that. What is this? What makes all of this go away, including being able to manage um, the SEC matter to a successful outcome? It's just an order book. Um, you know, in Silicon Valley, when they raise millions or billions of dollars and they quote break things, you know, they go out and just do stuff and break things, Uber and so forth. You know, they have a war chest to deal with the lawsuits and the people, the government agencies that sue them and all that. And they just, that's just normal process. It's such a big deal for us because we don't have the resources to arm up a bunch of lawyers every time there's a fight. So we try to avoid the fights, um, obviously. But some of them you can't avoid. And I, I would say that we found ourselves in that situation here because 
we just did. Okay. So it, it, it's in our face and we have to deal with it. There's no sense in, in, in doing anything, but focusing straight ahead and figure out what we're going to do. So um, if everybody still wants to see this through, I, I, you know, I can say this with a straight face. Uh, if everybody gets on the same page, uh, we trim the sales. That means, um, you know, looking at everything closely, dollar for dollar resources, where they come in, where they go out, what, what do we focus our time and uh, attention on between now and the end of the year? And we manage this situation. It's going to create all kinds of things. I mean, there's going to be some press coverage. Hopefully, it, it maybe it raises the profile up, negative, positive. It, who knows? Or it just dies. It's not a story. Nobody cares. Uh, we're gonna. It, it it will be found out pretty soon because the stories typically come out pretty fast. If it's going to be news, it's going to be news pretty quick. So we'll see if anybody cares. Um, the law journals covering it, um, I think that's actually good. I think getting them to pay attention to anything on us on the legal side, maybe to get into the other stuff, uh, is helpful. Um, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be an explaining thing that that uh, we have to do for anybody that wants to be a partner or wants to invest. Remember that these kinds of things happen. They happen to Tesla. They happen to big companies. They still do funding rounds. I mean, you know, if you want to look extreme cases, you got Tesla with Elon's constant. I mean, he's constantly saying stuff and pissing them off and getting called back. I'm not going to do any of that. I don't. There's no reason to be like that. But just get that even while he's doing that and they're fighting a particular matter, they're going out to the market and they're getting approval to raise more capital or issue more <laughs> debt. It's very bizarre because we think of it as a personal conflict between people, but that's really not what it is. Um, it's a job function. It's almost like dealing with a machine that follows a certain set of processes. And it's very hard to get it out of that process. It doesn't, it doesn't, Get, it has a track that it follows, and it, anything that diverts off of that track, it, it doesn't even recognize it. So um, in the case of making up a settlement offer, I think probably, um, you know, if, if I knew the game better, maybe the next thing to do would have been to just offer something in return instead of saying, no, I can't sign your blank check, because it, literally it would be that, and I have no idea what the impact would be. I should have tabled something in, 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 in that reply, but I specifically asked on the phone prior to that engagement whether or not um, I could submit something, right? So is it either this or nothing? And it was this or nothing. So, you know, I'm not sure what other uh, option I had to get to here. So anyway, here's where we are. Um, we have to deal with things as they are if we're going to deal with them. If not, then we're just going to have to call it a day and quit. And I, I don't know uh, you, if everybody wants, after 15 years of operation, nearly 20 years of development, um, you want to call it a day, this, this would be a logical place to do it and just let me uh, you know, deal with the shitstorm that follows, which is what happened every last you know, 10 years ago when everybody ran away. So. Um, I guess I'm waiting to see who stays and who goes, you know, because if nobody's going to stick around and try to uh, see this through, then I certainly can't do it by myself. And I'll just try to mitigate um, the result of what happened in this case, uh, you know, best I can uh, to against the shareholders and, and then just, I guess, <laughs> leave you with the asset and you do with it what you want. But I, I don't think, um, I mean, I think that's not the right approach. Um, I, I think this is definitely going to make it harder than it was day before yesterday. Um, but it's a big prize. And, you know, I, I keep trying to warn everybody that, you know, there's a cost to be paid. And since we're not raising 10, 20, $100 million and pulling, trying to pull off something that's that big, that the bill comes somehow, whether it's this, you know, being sued and having to deal with that as a headwind and, and, uh, and an overhead cost on your emotions and your time, maybe, you know, um, it would not surprise me. Is it a reason to become relevant? I mean, that thought has come to mind, and Alper will tell you that's true. I've told him numerous times that it popped in my head, um, even from last year, that our path to relevance would would not be typical, and it may come through a uh, through some sort of public conflict um, with the with the SEC. Well, 
here you go. Um, although I wouldn't call it a conflict at this point. It's just, um, this is what they do. Okay, so um, that's where it stands. Uh, if you're going to, uh, you know, we still need resource. I still have to pay. I'm radical honesty. I'm behind on payroll for everybody uh, at this point. I can't uh, stomach any more credit. So everything, it's all up at the max. Uh, literally, with, I'm within... Um, five or ten percent on all credit lines. So uh, without any income coming in, I can't service the debts. I can't pay anybody. Um, I can't move. So um, you know, the program. The only thing that we have that funds the development and the continuation is on is the SportShares.net uh, site and and what's listed there and what will be listed there. So um, that's where we get our money. Um, and if nobody, if everybody's going to run away and nobody's going to help us anymore, then we're not going to live much longer. I mean, I hate to be so stark and, and drastic, but that's the truth. Um, I can do a lot of things. I can take a lot of um, uh, bullets. I can, you know, I can, I don't have my, I don't have kids or, or a wife that I have to worry about. My decisions are going to affect them. That's all gone. So I can take a lot as an individual a lot of risk that other people can't take and, and just a lot of that. But I, I can't, uh, this, this is too big now for me to do by myself in terms of um, probably going to need to bring some legal talent to the table, I, uh, at least to help me construct some response that the court and the SEC can take because I really think that's where we're at. Um, you know, they have to operate within the law and the rules. And um, this is where a professional would know what could be put on the table that in the current condition of the law and the rules, they, they can accept. I think that is really, um, that's where expert help comes. And yeah, just, um, you know, look at us. I mean, this is like a Bitcoin Uber kind of moment for us. If we can show uh, orders and we can build the interest in, in, the product, the product is fine. Okay, the product will work fine with no bonus margin. With you know, is a straight up and down one to one, strictly controlled with all of the accounting put it in in place and uh, other people doing those accounting controls payments. Not me. None of our, you know, maybe a service provider, a separate service provider. The market will work and it will serve the function that we dreamed of. And if we can. Uh, go through this December event uh, and this process over the next few months and, and mitigate this SEC complaint and, you know, try to abuse it somehow to get, maybe at least get a conversation going, then uh, we get, we, we should create a, a list of these, of an order book basically, and then the order book will create the investment and the investment will bring the partners and then all the rest of that, and if there is some leftover of the SEC matter, then it will be resolved um, as part of the team effort. And even if there are fines paid, they come out of the backside or they're negotiated away to something you know manageable. That that is that's how the cleanup looks. Okay, so but you know what counts above all things, and what I heard in this lecture that I listened to uh, on the way, literally to record this was just get the order book. You know, get the order book, and then the rest of all this stuff can be managed away. Um, you know, the rest of it, no matter how scary and threatening it looks, will pale if we just can show we have a platform that produces orders and get it in front of the people that um, I've been building this network for the last 15 months now, basically. That's the business network. You have... Zach on the entertainment side, and then you have Bernie on the sports side. So we just pull all of those resources together and and create interest around what we're doing um, and get people who want to help us do it. There will be lawyers in that group. There will be all those people. Then, yes, we show them this thing, and then they get involved, and, and you know it will be managed to some kind of a successful conclusion. So um, I guess I'm going to find out empirically by what happens between now, I guess, and the next closing cycle, which is usually Monday mornings. So one week from, from well, today's Tuesday, Monday, next Monday. Um, the, the, pr the progress of the, um, the sales 
or the the sales of the the golden eagles and the silver eagles the the donation program that gives you that along with the other stuff is going to tell me where we are in terms of uh uh, whether you guys want to continue or you've given up uh and if you've given up i guess i have to figure out what to do with that um be a very sad thing it's like um but but i you know i can't do it if if everybody's going to run away like they did last time so i guess that's what i need to find out uh is if we're interested in continuing from here and and you know um get hunker down and 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 get serious and 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 trim the sails and deal with this less than fortunate event or maybe it is fortunate we just don't realize it yet but it certainly feels unfortunate at the moment or at least at minimum a headache on top of every other um headache that this thing um causes <laughs> so um you know, I, you know, the resistance is, is always greatest near the goal. And that's just a universal thing. If you don't believe me, just go do your own homework. Um, there's always a big giant thing trying to kill you at the top of the hill. Um, I mean, just look at the timing. We have an investor meeting. The investor says, go get an order. Jason produces the order. We have a call back to the investor meeting. And then the very next day, uh, after that, or actually the few days after that, yesterday, out, you know, without any warning, no further discussion, the SEC files the complaint saying that all of the effort that we've done for the past five years, well, actually, really the whole 15 years, but but they're, they, they're limited by law to five years because of this, the, I think, a Supreme Court decision. So five years, um, you know, as nothing has happened, when actually everything that was supposed to happen happened. The five years was uh, a nonprofit mission to build a for-profit market, and the for-profit market got its first order, and then bang, they attack uh, or file the case. Anyway, that's 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 uh, the God's honest truth of of all of it. Uh, not a word left out. Uh, nothing that I'm I'm aware of that you need to know. Um, I'm still here to do the job and to to go. You know, basically work for. <laughs> not only not equity but you know nothing but debt and um and overhead and you know it's it's not a profit uh opportunity for me it's coming it's it's my commitment to try to bring this to a conclusion from the first time around when it crashed and it feels like we're being threatened again very similarly and have a decision to make um this time if 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 everybody cuts and runs there's not going to be a number three um if everybody sticks in um, I, you know, actually kind of punches it up and put your, put your talents in, you know, it doesn't have to just be money. Um, everything needs money. It's, it's not, it's just normal, but put, put, put what you can, um, on the table to, to try to get us to a successful conclusion. Um, if you're going to help, there's enough people out there and enough people that know people out there, um, that we can make something of this. Um, I do think it's a mission worth saving. I do think it's a project that will have a huge impact on the world. We just have to see it through yet another um, difficult, a difficult challenge. It's it's a difficult one, but we've been we've been through quite a number of difficult challenges. So, um, you know, if you want, send me your comments uh, by email. It's fine. And uh, again, I, I think I'll know <laughs> from comments is one thing, but I'll know if anybody cares uh, whether I can clear up some of these past due bills and things and whether we have any money to even move forward another foot. Um, It's going to be found out pretty fast. So uh, that's all for now, and I promise to report anything and everything that uh, I think is uh, meaningful as soon as it is known to me. Bye now.